What's up guys, CB Modi here back with another video and today we're keeping it with Intel and taking a look at their new i5-8400 CPU. A monster of an i5 and definitely a very interesting part. Now if you missed our Intel Core i7 lineup, check it out right here or should be linked uh, down in that description box. But today we're taking more specifically a look at the Intel Core i5 if I don't drop it and hold it the right way. This is the first i5 ever to feature more than four cores and four threads on both the desktop and mobile side. With six cores and six threads available on the desktop side and numerous quad core options available on the ultra low power versions and also to just laptop versions in general, there's definitely a lot to like with the new Intel Core i5 lineup. Again, with the six cores and six threads and the speed of 3.6 gigahertz base and a boost of 4.3 gigahertz, the i5 top skew the 8600K is definitely a real contender when it comes to gaming, streaming and really doing anything with a system. It's very powerful and also too pretty quick. But the chip that really grabbed my attention was the 8400, this little guy right here. It doesn't offer us the K skew but it also too actually offers us a decent price point and actually still a lot of specs without actually spending a whole ton of money. In the design department, well it's really not that much has changed here. With the same 1151 socket design design, heat spread on one side and gold contact pins on the other, the design of this guy hasn't really changed. But let's face it, if we're putting coolers over the top of this guy and sticking it in our motherboards and the only real time we'll see them is in this video, at the end of the day the design isn't really that much of, well, a matter and if they were to change the design it would be kind of somewhat pointless. So design wise, it's basically the same as uh, previous generations. However with that being said, in the spec department that is where things get really really crazy. As I did mention, we get the four mentioned six cores and six threads with a base speed of 2.8 gigahertz and a boost speed of 4 gigahertz. Do keep in mind that this is the lower SKU we're checking out today rather than the top of the line SKU. There's definitely a lot more that this i5 can do, however we're looking at the more budget oriented one. We're also to getting 9 megs of cache and a 65 watt TDP, which was really awesome to see. 6 cores, 6 threads, 4 gigahertz boost for 65 watt TDP. This thing's going to be easy to cool and should fit in a lot of small systems that have not the greatest cooling. Much like the higher end i7, we also to get support for DDR4 2066 RAM and also to the i5 has two iGPU options for the higher end option and also to the lower end chip. The higher end i5 gets the higher end GPU with our particular i5 coming in with the uh, lower spec of the two with a 1.05 gigahertz boost speed and overall still high-end GPU but not really the highest end option there. Definitely going to get you buying some MMO and sort of uh, entry-level FPS games but I wouldn't be trying to apply high-end AAA titles on the iGPU. And compared to last year's 7400, there's almost no comparison on paper. With two more cores and a higher clock speed, three megs more cache and a higher end iGPU, just about everything about this new chip other than its core architecture is different and a whole lot better. Now whilst two cores doesn't sound like a whole much, going from four to six is actually a fairly big jump and you will notice it in your tests. Now just like the rest of these chips, we are looking at the 1151 socket and the need for the 300 series chipsets. So do keep in mind that you will need to pick up a new motherboard if you are picking up a new little chip like this guy. Unfortunately, they don't just drop into last gen and work. There is some sort of lock on this guy that won't allow it to work. Whether it's just a lock in there for no particular reason or it's for the fact that they have more cores requiring more power, meaning they need better design boards. At the end of the day, your guess as to why they need a different chipset is as good as mine, but it will not work with existing 200 or 100 series motherboards. Finally, this is also to a refinement of last generation. So unlike previous Intel releases where we had TikTok, TikTok, TikTok kind of setup, where we've had new architecture, refinement, new architecture, refinement, this time around we're getting a refinement of the refinement of last generation architecture. So it's still based on the 14 nanometer process, which is going to be delivering us solid single core performance and very solid IPC. However, it isn't a brand new architecture, so do keep that in mind. But nevertheless, speaking of performance and seeing how well it performs, let's jump into our gaming and also to synthetic tests. And let's go. So in games I paired it up with the GTX 1080 Ti and I found that actually in GTA 5 it was able to beat 
beat out the higher end i7. I'm not exactly sure why this actually happened and in the rest of the games that we tested it wasn't able to beat out anything else so it might have just been a blip but every time I ran GTA 5 it seemed to go ahead and actually beat it out so I'm not exactly sure what this little i5 is doing but it's doing something right to actually beat out the super high end competition which I'm definitely not objecting to. However the rest of the tests are pretty much much of a much. It doesn't beat out the higher end i7s which we're not all surprised but it definitely still stands up and well actually stands up really really well. With synthetics also to reflecting this where it comes close to the uh, higher end i7s but it is definitely no 12 thread monster. It still however delivers respectable and decent numbers and I'd have no problems recommending this guy to a lot of people out there. On the plus side this is the first i5 with more than four cores on both the desktop and laptop side. The price of this guy is also to not half that bad for a six core chip and the speeds and performance it delivers is actually not again too bad and is well really recommended there. Though with that being said on the downside our 8400 chip is not the fastest in terms of its base speed and isn't the fastest in terms of boost speed and without overclocking you're kind of locked with what you get out of the box and it would be nice to have uh, that overclocking support. It also too would be nice to have backwards compatibility being locked into the 300 series chipset and maybe fine for some people coming from like three, four, even five generation old hardware but if you've already got an 1151 system it would be nice just to plop in a new CPU and run with higher end components but unfortunately we can't do that. And then also do, I can't really find that many sort of downsides with this chip. Sure, AMD also to offers some really good value options out there, but for the Intel side, a six core chip for less than $300, which we'll touch on in just a moment, is pretty actually really, really decent. Now price point and in the market, as I did mention, it actually comes in really, really well. Price wise at just 182 US dollars or 170 Australian dollars, it is only about 30 more dollars than last generation, making it sit really well in the market. If you were planning on building a low-end i5 with a 400 SKU CPU, I definitely would have to say, hold off and actually grab this guy, spend that 30 extra dollars, you're getting a few more cores and definitely a lot better performance than last generation. I really do like it and I'd have to say that the 8400 is probably going to be my go-to part if I have to build out an Intel based CPU system. So then I guess that then leads us to who exactly is this for and I'd have to say again just about anyone. Thanks to its low price tag it's not going to be ruling out a whole lot of people like the high-end i7s and i9s are and it's actually doing a really good job in the gaming market, the uh, synthetics department and also to overall compute tasks. So whether you're trying to edit 4k video or you're just going to be a going ahead and playing some video games, it should be able to stand up to just about any task. Again, thanks to their multi-cores, it'll be great in 3D renders, again 4K video, but also do thanks to its 4GHz boost when it comes to gaming, you should be really going well here. So I have to say, uh, if you want an Intel chip that can do just about everything, i5 is pretty hard to go past now. Where the i5 was always great for just gaming, if you wanted to do anything more heavy you'd step up to an i7, I definitely have to say this year the i5 is really biting into some of the i7's lineup. And coming in under $300, again it's really not that bad and if you are into making YouTube videos, this would also to be a great YouTube style CPU. Being able to edit up all your videos, if you're into the gaming section as well, you could play your games, edit videos all in one system and not have to break the bank. However, with that being said, AMD is definitely hot on their heels. With their Ryzen chipsets also do coming out with similar specifications for similar or lower price tags, it does make this little i5 a little bit harder to recommend. But hey, if you're on the Intel side and you want something with six cores without breaking the bank, this little guy is definitely hard to go by. But overall, it is nice to see Intel join the high core count market, with parts that will perform well for not too terrible prices. Their excellent IPC and single core performance is right here and back at it again thanks to the fact that it's a refinement of previous generation technology and is also able to stand up with some higher end chips thanks to the fact that it has six cores on board and will be able to do a lot of things for you even if you didn't even think you really needed to do them. If you are looking at grabbing one of these things then you'll definitely need to jump on a new motherboard which is definitely a bit of a pain but at the end of the day it is a very solid package and if you pair this up with a lower end H series chipsets when they do come out you could get yourself a really powerful Intel system without dropping too much cash and it wasn't that long ago you'd be spending well into the multiple thousands of dollars to get yourself a six core processor and a motherboard to support it on the high end platform as that's really all they were but overall today it's nice to see you could spend less than a thousand dollars jump 
jump on 6-core Intel side and have a really good time. Overall though, let me know what you think of the new i5s down below. I personally really love the fact that you can get now more than 4 cores on the desktop side and I really think it's going to do some awesome things for gaming and also to content creation. But again, let me know what you think down below. Also too, if you want to pick up one of these chips, whether it be this lower end i5 or the higher end option, I'll leave them both linked down below uh, so you can pick them up there. Otherwise guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.